We've finally reached December. You know what that means? Christmas. You know what's associated with Christmas? Snow. You know where snow falls? Europe. You know what else happens in Europe? War. You know one of the largest wars that occurred there? The Great War. You know one of the common tactics they used? Trench warfare. Do you know the adjective referring to a force that's fortified in this way? That's right. Today, we're going to be looking at the highly requested game, Dead Ahead. Entrenched. We're reviewing Entrenched. Because apparently, one trench-related game wasn't quite enough to satisfy the horde. So, history time. Why are we sitting here in the mud wearing silly hats instead of being with our families? Well, you see, this guy here runs an empire full of all kinds of different people. Some of these people aren't huge fans of this arrangement, and when he visits one of his territories, he catches a serious case of 380 ACP to the neck. His country was understandably furious that their leader was assassinated, so they sent a list of demands to the country that the assassin came from, which was refused. These guys declare war on those guys, but those guys have an ally up here who declares war on these guys. They also have an ally though, and now they declare war on the guys who declared war on their ally. But wait! Those guys have another ally who now needs to declare war on everyone who declared war on them! And those people declare war right back! Finally, this guy up here sees everything that's going on, and decides to just chill for now. Now, these guys want to attack those guys, and in order to do that, they take a little detour through this guy, which causes them to declare war, and also drags their ally up here into the mix as well. From there, things just begin to cascade, and Europe eventually looks something like this. Now that we know how we got here, let's talk about the game. So you've got two opposing teams in a map. What now? Well, there are two different game modes. In Frontline, the objective of the game is to capture the most... objectives. Each team begins with three in their possession, and every five minutes the dynamic shifts between which team is on the attack and on the defense. If the attackers inflict significant casualties on the defenders, they can extend their attacking time by 90 seconds. Objectives are neutralized and captured depending on how many members of each team are inside of them. If one German's trying to capture a point that's got six Frenchmen in it, nothing's going to happen. The other game mode is called Conquest, where one team starts off holding all of the points and the other team has to capture each one to win. If the attackers manage to take an objective, the timer is extended. Ended. I have yet to see the attackers get past the first two objectives in this mode, but hey, maybe with the power of friendship and the magic of teamwork, they stand a chance. Hey guys, editing skit here in post. Um, while I was getting footage to fill in the gaps, my team did in fact win Conquest, so that's the power of friendship for you. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about classes. I had written this huge segment of the script about how inferior the German equipment was to the French stuff, but it seems like they made a few balancing adjustments to the weapons, so I'm not sure about the current stats. In general, French rifles have more ammo but do less damage, and French automatic weapons have less ammo and do more damage. Don't quote me on that, because I haven't done thorough testing, but that's how it feels to me when I play. I will say that each class feels unique and brings something to the table that none of the others could. You want to effortlessly pop heads through the din of battle from 800 studs away? Sniper class has got you covered. You want to hit a fat vape so your buddies can discuss ammo prices in peace? Skirmisher is the role you're looking for. You want to be able to hold left click and lay down 100 rounds of hate? You're in the market for a support class. In my 9 or so hours of experience, I find that my favorite two classes are Sniper and Assault. Snipers are just a god tier class overall, and they come with an e-tool to dig their own little fighting position. The Assault class was built by the Lord himself for sweeping trenches and other tight areas with its SMG and grenades. I don't really see the appeal of the Flamer. Firstly, that's a stupid name. No one calls it that. Secondly, they don't do nearly enough damage to be more valuable than the Assault or Support class. Maybe you'll hurt someone badly enough that they burn to death a few seconds after they kill you, but otherwise you won't perform well alone. Officers require you to be level 5 or higher to play as, which I think is pretty cool, and they can actually give commands to teammates around them. The thing is that no one actually listens to them, especially when they start getting too bossy or into character. No, Axolotl, I'm not going to be referring to you as Commandant or saying Yavu. Now, the name of the game suggests that digging trenches is a prominent feature. This is technically true. Most players have e-tools that they can use to reshape the earth like in attrition. However, this game suffers from the opposite problem that trenches has. In that game, too many people are digging trenches all over the place and hindering your movement. In this game, not enough people dig trenches and the battlefield tends to stay mostly intact. This is despite the fact that digging good trenches is usually the best way to gain ground and repel enemy attacks. The Conquest map Ain starts off with pre-built trench systems and artillery craters, and I think it's the most fun map in the game for this reason. I have mixed feelings about the guns in Entrenched. 
My opinion has shifted back and forth the longer I've used them for all sorts of reasons. The models don't look the best, but they have accurate moving parts even in third person. The sound effects are also alright, but there's something I just don't quite like about the guns in this game. This probably has less to do with the game itself and more with the time period it's set in, but the non-bolt-action weapons just don't feel good to me. They don't feel crisp, snappy, and reliable like modern guns, but more sluggish and fickle, like they're some of the earliest machines built for this purpose, which of course they are. This might be a benefit to some people who want a certain experience, but I'm personally not a huge fan. Also, I don't like how they perform. Anyone who knows me personally knows that there are two main things I like my video game guns to have. Accuracy and power. I don't play CSGO or Fortnite because I want my bullets to land where I aim them, not fly everywhere haphazardly. I don't play Star Wars Battlefront 2 or The Division because I want my gun to take down an enemy in a couple shots, not gradually whittle down their health. Both of these factors are present in the automatic weapons of Entrenched. It's not as bad with the French ones, but the bullet spread on the MP18 is appalling. The German machine gun fires 792x57mm Mauser rounds. That's this thing. It shouldn't take 10 shots to kill someone with it. All of this is in addition to the fact that the speed of bullets in Entrench resembles that of a standard nerf dart fired from a Lawbringer. If your target is moving at all, you need to lead your shots if you want to hit it. This effect is naturally exacerbated at longer ranges to the point where you're shooting a car's length ahead of someone who's just walking 500 studs away. I'm not saying that the bullets need to instantly laser across the world, but please make them a bit faster because this is just ridiculous. Now that we've talked about the gameplay, the classes, and the weapons, it's time to let our friend Glass take it away with the details. Details. As always, we'll start off with the positives. The kill sound effect is so satisfying, especially when you snipe someone. I would keep this sound to designate headshots and make a new one for other cases, because it's just too good to apply to something like this. Grenades are effective and pleasing to use. I like the shrapnel system that Entrenched has to calculate the damage from these. After the last couple updates, the UI has gotten pretty clean. There's custom decals for buttons, special fonts for messages, and a mostly uncluttered play interface, which you can now even toggle on and off. Just look at how cool the map voting screen looks. Speaking of map voting, this game is trying to have map rotation occur chronologically, with battles in 1914 leading all the way up to the war's conclusion in 1918. This doesn't work out so well right now because there's only 5 or 6 maps, but I think that'll be really cool once it's totally fleshed out. The casualty counter in this game is better than the one in trenches. It's got proper grammar and it lets you know who's getting their teeth kicked in. Nice. The joints on the characters are seamless. I don't know if this is difficult to do, but I don't see it very often, so good on them. The sun will glint off of sniper scopes and give away their position. As small a detail as this may be, it does help to counter the omnipotent sniper class. Now that I've mentioned some good features, it's time to look at some not so good ones. First off, the spawns in this game are absolutely atrocious. They're not just in a somewhat vulnerable position, they literally have a line of sight with the enemy team spawn. This means that you're taking fire from the millisecond that you deploy. When a team shifts from offense to defense, they're forced to retreat back to their point. While this does mean that they'll be more inclined to defend it, it also reverses any offensive gains short of a full point cap. This kills momentum and puts the defenders in a really bad position. This is a small one, but I've experienced it enough that it's stuck in my head. The reloads are very fragile, and will cancel if you get nudged a bit too hard. This last one is more of a problem that I have with third-person shooters that carries over into this game by its nature. I really like the FPS style better because it limits what you observe to a reasonable amount. In games like Entrenched, you got guys hiding behind obstacles, then popping out with a headshot already lined up because they can see you from around the corner. In conclusion, I think that Entrench succeeds as a World War I game. It's definitely the best one I've seen in this setting. I had fun while playing it despite the flawed mechanics. Most importantly, the game has an active development team that's constantly putting out fresh updates with new content and bug fixes. Will I play this game again just for fun? No, probably not. However, I can certainly see its appeal and I understand why I've gotten so many requests for it. I rate Entrenched Alpha a... Muddled 7 out of 10.